good morning children welcome to physical science online classes in previous class we learnt about the uh, ninth class first chapter that is matter around us in today's class we are going to see another chapter that is atoms and molecules and the chemical reactions in this chapter we are going to learn many things about uh, law of conservation of mass atoms what are atoms molecules and chemical formula etc and different types of chemical reactions also okay so uh, earlier it was thought that charcoal on burning it decreases its mass but the same experiment when carried out by antony levoisier he proved that there is no change in the mass of charcoal that means uh, he conducted that experiment in a closed container and he found that there is no change in the mass when charcoal is burned in a closed container there is no change in the mass that means before and after burning the amount is same so on the basis of his experiment he concluded that the mass remains same before and after the reaction this is known as law of conservation of mass so law of conservation of mass here i wrote law of conservation of mass it states that matter is neither created nor destroyed matter is neither created nor destroyed during a chemical reaction and in a simple way we can say that the mass of products is equal to the mass of reactants in a chemical reaction that means in every chemical reaction whatever the mass of the reactants that that will be equal to the mass of the products after the reaction also here reactants and products means what in any chemical reaction the substances which are involving in the chemical reaction are called the reactants the substances which are combining with each other which undergo a chemical change are called as reactants and the substances which are newly formed at the end of the chemical reaction which are newly formed after the chemical reaction are called as products so products are the newly formed substances reactants are the substances which are, which can undergo chemical reaction with each other okay so here what i am going to say is the mass of the reactants before the chemical reaction some x grams of reactants are involving in the chemical reaction means after the chemical reaction also the same amount of mass of the products will be formed here total mass of the reactants is equal to total mass of the products that is law of conservation of mass and here in today today's activity we will see one lab activity to verify how far it is correct to verify the law of conservation of mass we are going to see one lab activity so in this lab activity here a to find out the change in the mass before and after the chemical reaction is there any change in the mass before the reaction and after the reaction that we are going to verify and what are the materials required for that here we need lead nitrate that is pbno3 taken twice i wrote its formula pbno3 taken twice potassium iodide ki and two conical flasks a small test tube distilled water spring balance retort stand rubber cork thread etc these are the materials required now we will see the procedure how to do this activity so already i said in the required materials we need conical flask test tube thread rubber cork spring balance and iron stand like this now to verify this law of conservation of mass first of all we need to prepare two solutions one is lead nitrate solution and other one is potassium iodide solution lead nitrate solution its formula is pbno3 take it twice how we will prepare lead nitrate solution means first of all 
dissolve approximately 2 grams of lead nitrate in 100 ml of water and stir it properly. So, after dissolving that lead nitrate in the water, we will get a aqueous lead nitrate solution. Similarly, this lead nitrate solution should be taken in a 250 ml conical flask. Next, we have to prepare another solution of potassium iodide solution in the same way. Approximately 2 grams of potassium iodide dissolved in 100 ml of water in another conical flask. Here, in requirements, I said two conical flasks. In the first conical flask, prepare aqueous lead nitrate solution. In the second conical flask, prepare aqueous potassium iodide solution. So, from that conical flask, second conical flask, we have potassium iodide solution. From that second container, second conical flask, just take out 4 ml of potassium iodide solution and place it in a small test tube. This is the small test tube. In this small test tube, we have to place how much ml potassium iodide? Only just 4 ml of potassium iodide should be placed in the small test tube. And see here, as shown in the diagram, just tie this small test tube with the help of a thread to the mouth of the conical flask. In this morning, in conical flask already uh, lead nitrate solution is there. In this test tube, potassium iodide solution is there. And be careful that uh, the two contents should not mix with each other. Two chemicals should not mix with uh, each other while tying with a thread. Then close the mouth of the conical flask with a rubber cork. And uh, the uh, whole weight of the, means uh, here conical flask along with its uh, contents uh, the weight should be measured with the help of a spring balance. And when we are placing this test tube inside the conical flask, we have to be very careful that the two chemicals, lead nitrate and potassium iodide should not mix with each other. Then you find out its weight. That is the weight of the reactants. Here, weight, what, the, what weight we will get here? That one is weight of reactants. You find out here. Then, after knowing the weight of its conical flask along with its contents, then just remove it from this spring balance and just tilt the conical flask. Just it's like a straight position. Just tilt the conical flask like this. What happens when you tilt the conical flask like that? The contents present in the test tube means here. What is present in the test tube? 4 ml potassium iodide solution is present here. The potassium iodide present in the test tube will spill into this conical flask and reacts with the solution present in the conical flask. In the conical flask, the lead nitrate solution is there. So, there will be a chemical reaction takes place between this potassium iodide and the lead nitrate. So, when potassium iodide reacts with lead nitrate, we will get these two products, lead iodide and potassium nitrate. So, this lead iodide Immediately when the two reactants mix with each other, we will get uh, some yellow colored precipitate. Yellow color precipitate. This precipitate should be indicated with an arrow mark in the downward direction. And lead iodide formula is PbI2. Potassium nitrate is the another product which is a soluble product. Its uh, formula is KNO3. So here we get uh, two products. One is insoluble precipitate like a product and another one is a soluble product. Insoluble product is lead iodide and soluble product is potassium nitrate. This is the insoluble product. Insoluble product, this one is the soluble product. Like this, we get uh, two products uh, here. So now, after forming the products, again, you take this conical flask and hang it to the spring balancer and again, know its weight. Measure the weight of the products. Now inside the conical flask what is there? Products are there. So with the products formula, now again know its weight. That is the weight of products. Weight of products. And you will be found that uh, the weight of the reactants uh, is equal to the weight of the products. Whatever you have found the weight of the reactants uh, before undergoing the chemical reaction here, that weight will be equal to the weight of the products 
which are formed after the reaction. After the reaction also, the means what I mean to say here is total mass of the reactants is equal to total mass of the products. That means here we can prove that uh, law of conservation of mass is uh, verified and it is proved uh, correct. So, uh, did you observe any precipitate in this reaction? One question is asked in the text too. Means okay, we will definitely form the precipitate here. You can uh, observe the formation of a precipitate that is lead iodide. It is a precipitation reaction. And do you think that a chemical reaction has taken place in the flask? Yes, a chemical reaction has taken place in the flask. Why? Because there is, we can see the formation of new substances here. When we tilt the conical flask, the two contents mix with each other and we can observe the formation of new products here so that a chemical reaction has taken place inside the conical flask. Do the weights of the flask and its contents change during the activity? No, during the activity, the weights remain the same. Weights of the reactants and weights of the products remain the same. That means before the reaction one time we have taken its weight and after the reaction also we have taken its weight and both will be found same. What are your conclusions? So, hence we can conclude that total mass of the reactants is always equal to the total mass of the products during any chemical reaction. Hence we can prove the law of conservation of mass which was proposed by Antony Lavoisier.